That day seems to me exactly as it was yesterday. My name is Jenna, and that day permanently impacted my life even though I was just five years old. Dad left Mom and me by ourselves in our suburban house after another business trip. I heard the doorbell ring while still in the living room playing with my dolls. Mom hurried to respond, her face ablaze with recognition at who was there. Her voice shaking with enthusiasm, she advised, Jenna, honey, go to your room and play. I did as advised, but curiosity won me over. Peering around the corner, I saw a tall man I couldn't identify. Mom was packing clothing into a suitcase and moving quicker than I had ever seen her do. She zipped her bag and went to the door. Confused and terrified, I came out from undercover. Mommy, where are you headed? Not really meeting my eyes, she continued. I have to go away for a while, sweetie. Be a decent girl for daddy, okay? She was also gone exactly like that. No hug, no kiss, farewell. Only the sound of a car engine beginning and then disappearing into the distance. She did not come back when I stood there staring at the locked door. The house felt smaller and less occupied than it had ever done. I felt more terrified as evening descended. Though I was too short to reach the switches, I tried to turn on the lights. I started to weep as the gloom closed in around me. Mommy, Daddy, over and over I cried, but nobody showed up. Not sure how many days went by. I was hungry and thirsty, and the blackness looked to be alive, full of monsters just ready to seize me. I sobbed till I had no more tears, then, shuddered in a corner. I heard voices outside at last. Mrs. Johnson, our neighbor, was in conversation with someone. She was stating, I have been hearing a child crying for days. I worry something could have happened. The house was crowded with people, policemen, neighbors, and ultimately my dad, when the door exploded open. Jenna, he sobbed, grabbing me up in his arms. Oh God, Jenna, I am so sorry. I reached for him, relievedly crying. I noticed a policeman carrying a piece of paper over his shoulder. Mr. Anderson, he added earnestly, you ought to read this. Dad put me down softly and noted it. His face flattened as he read it. Suddenly he seemed older, as though he had aged years in a few brief seconds. She's gone, he said in whispers. Linda has disappeared. She said us farewell. The next few weeks melted together. To be with me, Dad missed work. Relatives, acquaintances, and a nice woman Dad mentioned as a child psychologist visited us in great numbers. Jenna has gone through a traumatic event, the psychologist said to Dad. After what happened, she is normal in having some fears and anxieties. And lad, did I have anxiety. I needed a light on to fall asleep. The dark scared me, and every time Dad had to leave, I fretted fearing he wouldn't return either. The anxiety never completely disappeared. It became ingrained in me as much as a component of my personality, based on my brown hair or green eyes. Jenna Anderson, the daughter whose mother left her, is terrified of the dark and constantly worries about being abandoned. Life descended into a new normal as the days stretched into weeks and the weeks into months. Dad and I teamed up too wise to negotiate this new planet without Mom. He started braiding my hair, badly at first, but improved with repetition. I figured out his preferred method of making his coffee. The day Dad made Helen. That changed the day Dad met Helen. Dad presented me to her when I was seven years old. Helen's gentle gaze and friendly smile made me feel quite relaxed right away. Helen started to show up often in our life during the next several weeks. Something I valued more than I could say, she did not try to substitute my mother. Rather, she set out her own area in our small family. I once heard Dad on the phone chatting to her. I believe it is time, Helen. Will you move in with us? Two weeks later, Helen moved in. She became something just as vital, a friend, rather than trying to be my mother. She always made sure my room had a nightlight, 
braided my hair far more beautifully than Dad could have, and helped me with my homework. Our lives altered in other respects as well as the years went by. Dad's business exploded and we were suddenly relocating to a large new house in an elegant area. I obtained my own room with a view of the rear pool and a walk-in wardrobe. Some things, however, stayed the same. I slept through with a nightlight still. Every time Dad traveled on a business trip, I still fretted. And occasionally, late at night, I would find Dad staring at old pictures of Mom. Starting like any other day, my tenth birthday went. Helen's particular birthday custom for me is pancakes, so I woke up smelling them. Dad was home from work, and later we were organizing a modest celebration. Everything appeared to be in order. The doorbell then started to ring. I stopped as soon I entered the living room. My mother stood there, appearing older but definitely identifiable. Beside her was a small child of five years old, wide-eyed, staring about and clutching a teddy bear. Linda, Dad murmured, his voice strained. What are you doing here? Mom drew in a long breath. Tom, I really apologize for everything. I know I have no right to be here, but she pointed to the young daughter. Emma, here is you. She is your daughter, she is. The hall went quiet. I thought I might not be breathing. Dad's face moved through a spectrum of feelings, shock, rage, incredulity, then something else. My daughter, he said one more. Mom nodded. When I left, I was pregnant. At the time, I knew nothing. Tom, I swear, I have made quite a lot of mistakes. Emma deserves to know her father. I am not asking you to forgive me. Dad bent down to the level of the small child, and I watched. Hi, Emma, he murmured softly. I is. Your dad here is me. Emma gazed up at him warily. Hi, she said quietly. I saw Helen palely standing in the doorway while Dad spoke to Emma. She turned and moved swiftly away. Though I felt grounded to the spot, I longed to follow her. The next few hours blurted together. Many adult conversations I wise and intended to hear included tears and screaming voices. I hid in my room, holding my knees to my chest and attempting to sort through it all. Dad dropped by to chat to me later that evening. Jenna, he said while perched on my bed's edge, I realize this is a lot to absorb. Your mother has some quite large blunders. Emma, though, is innocent in all that is happening. Her is your sister. For Emma's sake, I have chosen to offer your mother still another opportunity. I watched Helen load her car from my window the following day. She turned to see me observing, tears in her eyes. She said farewell. I waved back, thinking of a piece of myself leaving with her. That same day, Emma and Mom moved in. Emma went to the guest room. Mom replaced her in Dad's room. It felt terrible, as though she were wiping off the last five years as though they never happened. The years that followed were mixed. Mom returned, but it was not the joyful family reunion I had in mind from my early years. She lavished Emma with love and attention, but with me there was always a distance, an uneasiness that never really disappeared. Regarding Emma, however, she was just young. She asked to be born into this mess, and I tried not to resent her, but it was difficult, especially when I saw how readily she fit Mom and Dad's existence in a manner I never seemed to. I was more than ready to head for college by the time I reached 18. I had decided to study zoology. Animals always made more sense to me than people. They had simple feelings and neat family histories. They did not criticize. They were simply what they were. My departure for college was a mixed bag day. Dad gave me a close hug with tearful eyes. I'm quite proud of you, Jenna, he remarked. You are going to do fantastic things. Mom gave me a stinging shoulder pat. Good luck, she replied, her smile not quite reaching her eyes. Emma, then thirteen, rolled her eyes. At last I get my own room, she said. I tried not to hear her, concentrating instead on Dad's cozy hug. School was freeing. 
I was free from the stress at home for the first time, that continual reminder of my complex family circumstances. I immersed myself into my studies and turned to the natural world and creatures for comfort. Still, I battled socially even though I was a gifted student. Years of being an outsider in my own family had left their traces. I was timid, subdued, constantly terrified of approaching people too closely. Suppose they left as Mom had done? Suppose they replaced me like Emma seems to have done? Rather, I solace came from the college's little zoo. In free time, I volunteered there tending to the animals. My favorite was a very cranky elderly llama called Larry. Though he seemed to tolerate me, he disliked most people. Before I knew it, I was graduating from college. The years there sped by. Scanning the audience as I stood in my cap and gown with a certificate in hand. Dad was there, shining with pride. Emma and Mom were also there, gently applauding. Congratulations, Jenna, Mom said with a stiffy. Well, after our conversations, your father and I believe it's time you began looking for your own flat. You know, fly with your wings. I thought I had been gutly punched. Looking at Dad, expecting he would oppose her, he simply turned away with a painful grimace. Right, I said, attempting to keep my voice constant. Of course, I will start looking straight now. The days right after my graduation were tough. Though it felt everything from friendly, I was back in my childhood house. Dad did his utmost to put me at ease, but Mom and Emma made it abundantly evident that I was unwelcome visitor. Jenna, have you yet begun job search? Mom would ask over breakfast in a tone that seemed overly nice. You know it's crucial to arrive early with foot in the door. Emma would interject, yeah, and maybe you could find your own place too. Around here, it is becoming really cramped. The toughest nights were nights. Emma never noticed that I still needed my nightlight to sleep. She burst into my room one evening as I was getting ready for bed. She laughed sarcastically and gestured towards my nightlight. Given your 22 years, you still need that. Why then do you not have any friends? Shame caused my cheeks to flush. Mumbled, leave me alone, Emma. Emma was still not done, though. She brought it up once more, this time fronting everyone at dinner the next day. Hey, Mom, Dad, she remarked, her voice oozing with sarcastic concern. Jenna ought to see a therapist or something, right? She is an adult who can't make friends and fears the dark. Right, that is not usual. I sense something snapping inside of me. Years of pent-up resentment and hurt erupted. Emma, you want to know why I am like this? With shaking in my voice, I said, It is because my mother left me alone in a dark, empty house for days when I was five. What effects on a child do you know of? The table turned quiet. Dad turned down his plate, his face a mask of sorrow and suffering. Mom's eyes grew shocked, then rapidly became wet. How dare you? She sobbed, her voice suddenly loud. How would you be so hateful and nasty? This is how you honor me. I have worked so hard to atone to be a family again. I knew something as Mom's sobbing outburst went on and Emma grinned triumphantly. I could not live here any more. This was not my house. These were not really my family either. I threw myself into job hunting with fresh intensity that day on. Then at last, a sliver of optimism. I had an interview set for a little animal rehabilitation center. Though not glitzy, it was a beginning. That morning I left the house cautiously hopeful. But when I got there, I discovered a quickly handwritten note on the door. Events unanticipated cause cancellation of interviews. We sincerely apologize for any trouble. Let down, I left early then planned for home. Mom and Emma, deep in conversation, could be heard in the living room as I unlocked the front door. I heard my name and almost started to declare my presence. If Jenna weren't around at all, Emma was said. I mean, she deserves none of Dad's money. It is unfair. She is not even essentially a member of this family. Mom said, her voice calming, I know, sweetheart. 
Still, we have to exercise patience. Convince your father to change his will once she moves out will be simpler. We just have to keep urging her to go. I thought I had been submerged in icy water. They wanted me gone from the family totally, not only from the house. And they also wanted my inheritance. Sitting on my bed, my mind flew. What action ought I to take? Should I forward this to Dad? But would he believe me above Emma and Mom? Though he loved Mom, he had forgotten her for deserting us. Perhaps he would side with them. My first lucky break came when I happened into a job advertising the city zoo. Their initiative for wildlife restoration called for a zoologist to help. Though not glamorous, it was exactly what I had been taught. I applied right away and to my astonishment and happiness, I was contacted to interview. On the day of the interview, I stood in front of the main gate of the zoo inhaling deeply to relax my anxiety. The interview turned out better than I could have dreamed. Driven by knowledge and enthusiasm, the lead zoologist, Dr. Martinez, looked taken aback. Jenna smiled warmly and added, you have the job. Welcome to the team. I could have relievedly started to cry. At last, something was turning out perfectly. Working at the zoo exceeded all I had hoped for and more. My days were spent tending to wounded animals, teaching guests about environmental preservation, and even helping with research projects. Using the money I saved, I could rent my small flat and would go back there in the evenings. I started joining internet forums for animal lovers and those with same interests in order to fight the loneliness. I ran across Jake in there. From the same city, Jake shared my passion of animals and had a terrible sense of humor that made me laugh, even on my hardest days. We began talking often, exchanging tales about our daily lives and debating everything from the most recent environmental initiatives to our preferred novels. Jake asked one day that we trade pictures. I emailed him a recent picture of me at the zoo using shaky hands. He followed with a picture of himself. My heart skipped a beat at his friendly grin and gentle eyes. Though I loved our conversations, the thought of getting together personally or even owning my developing emotions scared me. What if, once he came to know the actual me, he turned me away? Suppose he departed as Mom had done. I began corresponding with Lily, a girl I met on a support group for those suffering from childhood trauma about this time. She sensed my worries in a manner none else could. You know what keeps me going? One day Lily composed a letter. I send emails to those I would not be able to meet in person. Though I don't say it, I pour out everything I am feeling, all the things I wish I could say. I preserve them simply as drafts. She finds great cathartic release from it. Following Lily's guidance, I began emailing Dad. I told him everything about overhearing Mom and Emma's chat, about how I felt that he lacked awareness of me anymore, about how I felt like an alien in my own family. I began also writing to Jake. I let myself be vulnerable in these emails in a manner I could not be in our conversations. Jake, I wrote, I'm scared, but I think I'm falling for you. Letting anyone get near to me makes me afraid. I fear being hurt once more. These emails too stayed unsent, my emotions buried under the protection of my drafts folder. Dad answered sporadically, his voice a mix of uncertainty and concern. Jenna, honey, he would ask, why not come over for dinner this weekend? We are missed. Every time I would invent a justification. Apologetic, Dad, I have a major project under progress at work, or this week I'm not feeling good, perhaps next time. That Saturday afternoon was just another. I heard my name called while shopping for the basics in the mall. Is that Jenna then? Turning around, Helen, my erstwhile stepmother, was there. She seemed older, but her gentle eyes were exactly the same. Years of separation were vanishing in an instant before I knew it, we were hugging. It was then that I saw the small lad staring up at us attentively next to her. This is Mike, my nephew, Helen said, gently combing the lad's hair. Right now I am raising him. 
Last year, my sister passed away. Helen updated me over coffee on her life following her and dad's divorce. She had been living alone until Mike's sister passed away. Mike was now looking after her. After that, we began to get together regularly, sometimes just the two of us, occasionally with Mike. Helen phoned one day and desperately wanted to look after Mike that evening. Mike came to my flat carrying a rucksack. I could hear him tapping away on my laptop in the living room as I started supper in my small kitchen. I promised him he could play games once his homework was done. Mike looked guilty and his face was pale when I stepped out of the kitchen carrying two plates of spaghetti. With shaking voice, Jenna, he began, I did something bad. Curious, I looked through your drafts folder and sent all of these emails. I'm really sorry. The planet seemed to be leaning on its axis. Those emails, my inner thoughts, my strongest emotions, sent to Dad to Jake. I felt as though I was not breathing. That evening, my mind racing, Mike left and I lay in bed. Dad's perspective would be what? And Jake, my God. My phone pinged with a message alert. From Jake, but I couldn't get myself to read it. Suppose he found my emotions repulsive. Suppose he never desired to talk to me once more. That night I hardly slept, wriggling and turning while visualizing all the worst-case situations. A few days later my phone rang. Dad, was it? Jenna, he remarked with a sobering tone. We have to chat. Could you perhaps meet me in the cafe next to your former high school? Sitting opposite Dad in the little cafe, my heart hammered. He appeared worn out, lines on his face that I had not before observed. I got your emails, he remarked softly. Jenna, I had no idea you were feeling this way about your mother, about Emma, about everything. I could not meet his eyes, shame and weariness battled inside me. Dad gently but firmly responded, Jenna, look at me. Startled to find tears in his eyes, I raised my head. More than everything in this life, I love you. Apologies, I made you feel as though you were not very important to me. That is never exactly what I meant. About Mom's return, about Emma, about how I'd been pushed aside and forgotten, we spoke for hours, really, in a manner we hadn't in years. Dad listened, very carefully, sometimes blotting away a tear. At last he got to his feet. I need some time to absorb all this, he stated. But Jenna, we will work this out, you and me. I commit. Relief and anxiety mixed together as I watched him go. Now what? But my phone rang once again, so I had not much time to think about it. Jake it was. Jenna, he continued, his tone friendly. After reading your email, I feel the same way. Though I have been too afraid to say it, you really are great. Are you game for a coffee meeting? My heart took off. Yes, I answered, surprised by how consistent my voice sounded. I would love to. I ran across Jake at a little coffee shop the following day. In person, he was much more attractive, and his friendly grin calmed me right away. We discussed our dreams, our worries, our pasts for hours. I felt actually seen and understood for the first time in years. One cool morning my phone rang as autumn's leaves started to fall. Dad, was it? Jenna, he continued, his voice friendly but with an undercurrent of something I couldn't exactly identify. Would you kindly come to Thanksgiving dinner? Having you here is very significant. Something in his voice let me agree. Thanksgiving day dawned, and my heart thumping, I stood on the front porch of my boyhood house. Though Jake had volunteered to accompany me for encouragement, I thought I should be facing this on my own. Mom answered the door. Her grin fell short of her eyes. Jenna, how good of you to come see us. Emma, curled on the couch, hardly turned from her phone. You came, really. Dad came out of the kitchen, hugging me gently. He said, I'm glad you're here, sweetheart, softly. There was obvious tension as we sat down to supper. Emma and Mom looked at one other, their grins forced and fake. Dad, on the other hand, appeared strangely quiet. 
Dad cleared his voice just as Mom started to present the turkey. We should talk about something before we start. Reaching down to his chair, he retrieved a big manila envelope. Dad started gathering records and arranging them on the table. Linda, Emma, I investigated as I knew for a while things wasn't quite right. He put up a bank statement. First, I found fairly significant withdrawals from our accounts that I did not make. The face of Mom turned white. Emma now thought her plate was really fascinating. Dad then started bringing out still another document. I paid Linda a private investigator. He sent pictures of your meetings with a certain gentleman at the Rosewood Hotel. Mom gasped as her palm shot to her mouth. Tom, I can explain. Dad still had work to do, though. His hand shaking slightly, he withdrew one last document. And at last, I underwent a DNA test. Emma is not my daughter biologically. The chamber grew quiet. Emma's phone landed on the floor, clattering. Mom gave the impression of perhaps passing out. I've already talked to my lawyer, Dad remarked, his voice firm despite the emotional resonance in his eyes. Linda, I'm filing for divorce and I'm afraid I'll have to ask Emma and you to leave this house. Mom found her voice, shock replaced by rage. You are unable of doing this. I'll take you for everything you have. Dad's face grew stiffer. Actually, Linda, you wouldn't. Should you seek to claim any property, I will counter sue and demand back off of all the money you have taken plus what I have spent raising Emma. My attorney guarantees me I have a quite solid case. As Mom realized the truth of the matter, tears flowed down her face. Emma sat in startled quiet, her life falling apart all around her. Mom and Emma moved out the next few days. Dad and I started to reconstruct our bond, stronger than it had ever been. Every week we had dinners, lengthy conversations, and even began organizing a road trip between father and daughter. Over coffee one day, Dad cautiously mentioned Helen. I have been thinking a lot about the past, about the mistakes I made, he added. I apologize to Helen by getting in touch. We have been meeting for coffee to work through things. I grinned, actually pleased for him. That's excellent, Dad. Helen is a really remarkable woman. For myself, things with Jake were turning out better than I could have ever dreamed. He was understanding of my worries and insecurities, gentle and tolerant. I was beginning to get through my problems in therapy with his help.